Joshua, chapter number 14. Joshua, chapter 14. I've, I've preached on this before here, but I just felt led of God to go over it again. Joshua 14, beginning at verse number 6. Are you there? Amen. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephna, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land and brought, me, and brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be that thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. And he said, These forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain. Father, thank you for your word. I thank you for the opportunity we have to, to uh, uh, break the bread of life. I thank you for the testimonies that we've heard tonight, God, and the, the love that people have for you and what you been doing in lives and what you're doing in lives and what you're going to continue to do in lives. We praise you for it, Heavenly Father. I pray tonight, God, that you'll give us revelation, revelation that we're, where we can continue on, Lord, in your in, 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 in your way and, and have the course of life that you've ordained for each of us. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. And amen. Amen. Can you imagine claiming something and waiting on it for 45 years? Dream about it, think about it, <coughs> holding on to it. And then can you imagine in that 45 years the things that warred against him? To try to get him to let go of what God had promised him. Every time God makes a promise, the enemy makes a plan. I'll say it again. Every time God makes a promise, the enemy comes up with a plan. And his plan is to stop you from getting into that promise. He doesn't want you to walk into that promise. You may have been waiting on something for many, many years. It, and, and, and it's not yet manifested itself. But I want you to notice something. I want to I get into the character of this man. I want you to notice. He said, and we touched on this a little bit last night. But he said, when I went with, into that land with my brethren. He said, I saw then what I wanted. And I made up my mind that I was going to get what I was after. Nevertheless, he said, they caused the people's heart to melt. But in the process of their heart melting, he said, I stayed holy with the Lord. Uh. 
In other words, it didn't matter what everybody else done. I stayed with God. It didn't matter what anyone else said. I stayed with God. It didn't matter what anyone else thought. I stayed with God. Nothing was going to take me away from my relationship with God. We've got to have such a mindset that nothing is going to take us away from our relationship with God. Can you say amen? amen. He had a mindset not to quit. A never quit attitude. If we can have that never quit attitude. Here's some things about him that I want to try to implant in you. And maybe from this we can learn something when it comes to receiving the promises of God. How many know sometimes you've got to wait on the Lord? Amen. Sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. That's right. Sometimes it doesn't happen in our timing. God's got a perfect time. It now, became, it now became Caleb's time. Now watch what this man said. He said, I was strong when I was 40. I looked at the land then and said, I can take it. Remember, Caleb was the one that stilled the people and said, let's go up at once, for we are well able. He said, I was well able when I was 40. Now I'm 85. And I'm as strong now as I was when I was 40. Matter of fact, my faith is even stronger now than it was then. Hallelujah. I've been through a lot of shaking. I've been through a lot of ifs and uh, uh, buts and neverthelesses and down and out and all kinds of stuff going on around about me. I've listened to the negative talk of the people, but nothing got in my way of my service with God and nothing got in my way of wanting the mountain that I saw. That mountain the day I saw it was mine and I made up my mind I'm going to get it. It didn't take it. It didn't matter how long it took to do it. I was going to get it. No matter how long it takes you to get your healing, hold on to your healing. No matter how long it takes you to get your deliverance, hold on to your deliverance. Hallelujah. Once you're delivered, hold on to that. Hold on to it. Hold on. Now, while, while you're waiting on it, do nothing but talk about your deliverance. I'm delivered. 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 Praise God. Nothing get in the way of what you want from God. So number one, he was a man of vision. He was a man of vision. It is, it is a must. And I touched on this a little bit this week. It is a, it is a must to be a person of vision. Amen. But you've got to lock in on your vision. Amen. What was it one prophet said? Without a vision? Amen. People perish. Why is that? Because without a vision, they have no they have no direction. They don't know which way to go. Vision is imperative. Caleb was a man of vision, but once he got a hold of his vision, nothing was going to take it away from him. Oh, hallelujah! Get a hold of your vision. If if it, if it seems to be that your vision has got a little cloudy, that's all right. Praise the clouds away. Mm. Just praise the clouds away and continue to hold on to that vision. Amen? Amen. He, was a man, he was a man of vision. He was a man, number two, that would not let go of the promise. Would not let go of the promise. I reminded of a little lady in the New Testament. That had some physical ailments. Yeah. Hallelujah. She heard Jesus was coming. <coughs> she made up her mind. I'm going to get so close to him that I can touch him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. She had to go through a crowd to get there. Yeah. You know good and well she had to be pushed down. You know good and well her body was weakened. Uh -huh. She had been bleeding for years. Yep. She kept going and kept going and kept going. Why? Because she held on to a promise. She knew there was a promise. If I could but touch him. If I could but touch him. He will in return touch me. Glory to God. And all I need is a touch from him. Praise God. I will be healed. Pushed his way, pushed her way through. Absolutely. Till she finally touched him. And Jesus stopped. And he said, Somebody 
touched me. Has touched me. Amen. Oh. Amen. Uh, Peter and the boy said, surely someone has. There's a multitude of people around you. And I'm paraphrasing, but Jesus said, no, you don't understand. Somebody touched me. Somebody really touched me. Whoa. I felt faith reach out and grab a hold of me. And in return, I felt the virtue leave my body. Hallelujah. Somebody has been made whole this day because they touched me. Hallelujah. She held on to the promise. Would not let go of the promise. God's giving you a promise. Don't let go of the promise. Whatever you do, hold on to the promise. Look at somebody and say, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. Hold on. Not going to let go of the promise. Amen. Will not. God's promised me my children. I will not let go of that. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let go of that. I praise God every day for my children. And I praise God every day that they're coming into the house of God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I had a, my granddaughter call me today. She doesn't even know I'm in town. She called me today. She said, Grandpa, I got a question. I need to know. I need to know what to do. I said, what's going on, baby? She said, my, my little granddaughter, my little granddaughter, her, her daughter, she said, she said uh, she's seeing people in the basement. I said, do what? She said, she's seeing people in the basement. She said, now, they ain't bother nobody, but she sees them, and they're always in the same spot. She said, what should I do? I said, you need to get down there and pray over the basement. She said, Grandpa, if that's what you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. I'll pray over the basement. She said, I know if I'll do that, then I'll be all right. I said, you'll be just fine. Hallelujah. Here's a girl that don't even go to church, but she knows God. Ain't serving, but yet she still knows him. And she knows enough that when trouble comes, who to call upon. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Call upon. Just call upon the man upstairs. Hallelujah. Sometimes they got to call grandpa to figure out just exactly how to do it. But I'll tell him, just call on him. You know you need Jesus. Praise God. Jesus will take care of everything. Hallelujah. I plan on seeing them this weekend. But uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing the lifestyle they live, but yet, but yet, when they're faced with a difficulty, they call Grandpa and say, what can I do? They know that the name Jesus works. They know that when you need, when you use the name of Jesus Christ, it works. I'm not so sure the church has got a hold of how it really works. But it works. You got, you got a promise that you're holding on to. Hold on to that promise in the name of Jesus. He's been given a name that's above every name. And by that name, hallelujah, we are delivered. By that name, we are saved. By that name, we are set free. By that name, we are made whole. By the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Caleb would not let go of the promises. He, would, he refused to let go of that mountain. 45 years. And he would not let go of that mountain. He envisioned himself living on the mountain. See, you've got to envision yourself living in the promises. Amen. Are you hearing me? You've got you to really see yourself living in the promise. Oh. I don't see myself outside the promise trying to get in. I see myself inside the promise. Hallelujah. you got to see yourself inside the promise. Praise God. He saw himself living and his family living on that parcel of ground. He went on to say, and I didn't read it, but he went on to say, I'm as strong now to run those folks out of that mountain as I was when I was 40 years old. Just give me this mountain and you watch and see what I do with it. Give me the promise of God and just watch and see what I do with it. Hallelujah. Once God gives it to you, you've got to do something with it. Can you say amen? amen. But he held on to the promises. He was also a man that, that refused to give in to distractions. Wow. 
refused to give in Amen. to distractions. Now you know as well as I do that when revival comes or church time comes, there's always some kind of distraction. Amen. Huh? Georgette was talking about it a while ago. All kinds of distractions. And she could have rightfully stayed home. And everybody would have said, we understand. Sure. Right? Sure. Totally understand. But no, we're going to church. Amen. Oh, why? God's got something for us. <laughs> and, 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 and if I don't go, I'm going to miss it. So I'm going to go. Hallelujah. We'll make do. Praise God. This thing will work out somehow or another. Praise God. Diarrhea is not going to hold me down. After all, they got a bathroom at the church. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. I can get there. I'll be all right. Not giving in to distractions. Listen, this world is filled with distractions. They're everywhere. And they will do anything they can to get in the way of you and the promise. Absolutely. Try to distract you. Have you ever been in church and got distracted? I mean, you can't really get involved because your mind's just running every which way. And then you wonder, how in the world did that thought just get in my brain? Right. Has nothing to do with church. My God, that thought was awful. How did it get that? How did that go through my mind? Now I know I'm not the only one that has ever battled anything like that. Huh? And you're like, I want to get in, but I can't already, I can't get my mind right here. I can't get into this thing. Distraction. Distraction. Well, what do you do when you get that way, preacher? You praise your way through. Amen. Just like Raymond was saying, you praise your way through. You just make up your mind, I'm going to praise my way through this thing. Because sometimes there is only one thing you can do, and that's to praise your way through. Hallelujah. Sometimes the only way to get it is just to praise your way through. Just to lift up holy hands. Hallelujah. And praise your way through. Glory to God. So he was a man that would not give in to distractions. Refused to. Oh, he had them. Sure. He had a whole generation of distractions. He had all kinds of reasons. People were willing to tell him and give him all kinds of reasons why he would never have that mountain. Oh, people are willing to tell you why you can't do something. Especially when you're stepping out on faith. Isn't it the truth? Yeah. You look foolish stepping out on faith. Well, I would rather look foolish for the Lord. I'd rather look like an idiot for God than appear to be the smartest man in the world. Amen. 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 But let me tell you something. What is so neat about serving God? When you step out on faith, He never makes you look like an idiot. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's another thing about this man. He refused to give in to hard times. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. When the going gets tough. The tough gets going. The tough get going. Amen. It'll prove how tough you are. That's right. When tough times come. Ah. Glory to God. <laughs> he refused to give in to hard times. He had it in his mind, I'm going to be a good soldier for the Lord. And no matter how hard it gets. Anybody here ever had hard times? Anybody had them here lately? Mm. But you're still here. That counts for something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, God never did promise that this thing would be easy. Just they sang earlier. He never promised that life would be a rose garden. He ne ne never, no. never promised that it just. What did was, they say? The first hundred years are the hardest. Then, yeah, you get the first hundred, and you're going, you're, you're going, on, you're, you're okay. You'll be all right. Yeah. 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 Well, here's 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 one thing that 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 Caleb drew in though. He grew in wisdom. 
We need more wisdom. And the Bible tells us in James that we can ask for it and he'll freely give it to us. We don't have to be dummies. Come on. I said we don't have to be dummies. We can be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Glory to God. So he, 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 he would never give in to hard times. Watch this. He never lost his strength. That means over that 45 years, a year, a forty-five year period that 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 he kept exercising his spiritual muscles. He kept exercising faith. How many know you got to exercise faith? He never lost his strength because he continued to exercise himself in the Word of God. You got to continue to exercise yourself in the Word. Bathe yourself in the Word. Let the word surround you, be in you, and, and around about you, and and and, and 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 let it continue to strengthen you. After all, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who does what? Strengthens us. Hallelujah. It's it's by his strength we can take the mountain. It's by his strength we can get the promise. It's by his strength we can get healing. It's by his strength we can get deliverance. It's by his strength we can get joy. It's by his strength we can get peace of mind. It's by his strength we can be established. It's by his strength we can be stronger than strong itself. Hallelujah. By the strength of God. Hallelujah. And he will strengthen us day in and day out. Yes. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord tonight. Don't Amen. you feel the Lord? Amen. Amen. This has been a good week. It's been a fast oh, week, though. Yes. But it's been a good week. Yes. Here's the next thing about him. He never lost his courage. Oh. I can't tell you over the years how many people I've seen lose their courage. Amen. They fought and fought yes. and fought and fought. And they just finally lost their courage. The fight was just too hard. <coughs> Not for Caleb. And think about this. He never had anybody around to encourage him. That's the truth. Oh. Think about that. No, he didn't. David said one time, I didn't have anybody encourage me. I looked around couldn't find nobody encourage me. Amen. So David said, hey, guess what I did? I encouraged myself. Amen. Ah. Amen. <sighs> I just encouraged myself. Glory to God. I told myself, self, it's going to be all right. I told myself, self, we're going to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He talked about himself in the third person. He didn't care if it sounded nutty at all. He said, I'll, 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 I'll get it by myself. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can't find nobody to lift your lift you up, but you got to do like Grandpa used to say: lift yourself up by the boot, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, and be a man. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah, you got to do it. Sometimes you just got to do, do it. No one around to help you, and you're crying and whining and carrying on, <coughs> and you finally just say, "Well, it doesn't look like no one's going to call me. It doesn't look like no one's going to come by the house." I, Look, just looks like nobody really cares. Maybe I just need to do this all by myself. Maybe you need to. All by yourself. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you. I've had to encourage myself by myself. Have you ever had to encourage yourself by yourself? Hallelujah. Amen. He was a man that never lost his courage. Wow. Can you imagine? 45 years. 45 years. Most people's ready to die at 85. But Caleb was ready to fight. He must have been from Fountain Square. <laughs> yeah. He told me he still was better up there. He, Ronnie probably was that guy that did the hubcap thing. He probably, he probably was. I've done my share of mischief in Fountain Square. I probably was. No, I was talking to the bad. Oh. Don't mind, Wanda. He probably helped. He probably helped Brother Ronnie. He's a, 
He's holding the lights. Midnight Auto Park. One time, one, one time, one time I was trying to pop some hubcaps. One, one time I was trying to pop, pop some hubcaps. I was a little closer to twin air when I did this, so I was trying to pop, pop some hubcaps, and the police came. And I took off running down an alley, and they turned down an alley. I jumped into a 55 gallon of a barrel, oh and they had just burnt trash in here. <laughs> I didn't stay in there too long, but <laughs> but I was praying this too shall pass. Lord, let that cop go on quickly, <laughs> go quickly. <laughs> I worked at Lionel Ford and they told a story about these guys was taking a trash piece out of the car in the parking lot and the guards was up there holding a light for them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they were helping somebody. Oh my goodness. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> I've heard that deal. I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> What's just next? He never lost his faith. Wow. This is important. He never lost his faith. Now, have you ever had times when you just kind of lost your faith a little bit? Just kind of wavered a little bit in your faith. You knew you couldn't quite get a hold of it. Yep. What am I going to do? Well, the Bible says when you're that way to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Huh? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. And He'll strengthen you on your most holy faith. Amen. Praise God. He'll establish Amen. you. Praise the Lord. But He never lost it. 45 years. I want you to get a hold of it. 45. Sometimes we can't wait 45 minutes. Let alone forty-five years. Most most people that I that I'm acquainted with, after forty-five years, they would think God done forgot about them. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up. <laughs> right? That's true. Well, he must have forgot. No, he didn't forget. He had a time, and he had a season, and he had a reason. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Uh, and now Caleb was walking in that time and in that season and found out the reason. Glory to God forever. And he held on to that faith. Held on to faith. Marilyn Hickey calls it bulldog faith. Yeah. Clamp down on it. Don't let it out. Don't let go of it. One chomp, and that's it. Lock that jaw. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Nothing going to pull you away from it. Tug all you want, but I'm not letting go of it. Glory to God. He would not let go of his faith. Listen, child of God, I challenge you to never let go of your faith. I don't care how dark it may seem. I don't care, I don't care how many problems you may have. Don't let go of your faith. We need to lay hold of eternal life. Grab a hold of faith. Hallelujah. And know that it's going to see us through the most dark times. Amen. The heaviest times. The hardest times. But we're going to make it through anyway. Praise God. I'm not going to keep you long because I'm coming on the last one. The last, last but not least. He refused to entertain doubt. And unbelief. He refused to entertain doubt and unbelief. He refused to hang around folk that would talk doubt and unbelief. Sometimes you just got to part friendship with some folks because of what they're speaking into your life. Can't give in to the doubt and the unbelief. Amen. Don't let them, don't let anybody talk that junk to you. Man. Don't 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 entertain doubt and unbelief. Let me tell you something. It, it can get a hold of the greatest preacher. Absolutely. Yes. It can get a hold of the greatest saint of God. Doubt and unbelief, especially when you've been waiting. 
45 years. What a man. What a man. What an example. What an example for you and I. We ought to be encouraged just to know that if we do what this man did, oh my God, <laughs> we're going to see it. We're going to see it manifested. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I'm a firm believer that all things are possible to him that believes. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. another man? I mentioned him night last night or night before last. Abraham. Abraham held on for 25 years. 25 years. Amen. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 4 that he refused to consider the deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He refused to consider that. He refused to even give it consideration. Refused to. Refused to think about it. Wow. If we could just get to the place where we refuse to think about doubt and unbelief. That's right. Amen. And you know good and well Abraham had people coming around and reminding him sure. how old he was. Yeah. Yeah. Now how's it going to be now, Abraham? Yeah. You're too old. Let's me know that just with these two gentlemen, you're never too old to fulfill what God wants for That's you in, his life, in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're, you're never too old to begin. Thank God. Thank God. Just when you think it's the end, it's God the says it's the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. He'll give you strength. He'll put, a, he'll put a bounce in your step. Glory to God. Put a smile on your face. He'll put strength in that old back. Glory to God. He'll lift you up. Praise God. He'll put the words in your mouth. He'll give you a ministry, glory to God, and, 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 and I don't care if it's a, look, look, the greatest ministry around is a one-on-one -on -one ministry, hallelujah, it's not speaking before thousands, it's a one-on-one -on -one ministry, Jesus had a one-on-one -on -one ministry, ah, hallelujah, just a one-on-one -on -one ministry, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, just being the example, amen. <laughs> Refuse to entertain doubt and unbelief. What a man. What a man. What a man. I would like to say that I measure up to that. But I gotta say I really don't. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm working on it. First hundred years are the hardest. First hundred years. First hundred years are the hardest. Yep. <laughs> Hallelujah. You gotta see it first. You gotta see it. That's the whole key. You have to see it. See, as I said earlier, he saw himself living on that mountain. He saw that mountain as being his. Nothing could talk him out of that. You've got to see yourself healthy. Yes. You've got to see yourself wealthy. You got you got to see yourself delivered. You, you have got to see it. It has got to be a reality to you. Hallelujah. And guess what? It just happens. It just happens. I like hearing those testimonies where, 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 where it was said tonight, I had cancer. Amen. <laughs> I had. I had. I had. Come face to face with it. Uh, go. <laughs> told that sucker to go get out of my life you have no room in me you don't belong in my body hallelujah Woo! glory to God you must flee in the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to God and then say now it's no longer there hallelujah and guess what it ain't coming back Glory to God. Why? Because it's been defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I see myself healthy. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 You got to see it. 
you got to envision it. That's why I said he was a man of vision. He saw it. He saw it. My question is, how do you see yourself in God's kingdom? How do you see yourself? I see myself healthy. Amen. Praise God. As a baby learner. Someone said joint heir meant to go. I see myself as a joint heir. How do you see yourself? Praise God. A princess. Glory to God. Wow. A queen mother. Without spot or blemish. Without spot or blemish. Ah. Son of God. Without spot or blemish because the blood has washed it away. Hallelujah. Ain't got no more wrinkles. Glory to God. Woo! How, how do you see yourself? I see myself full of joy. Like him. Hallelujah. Now I didn't hear you. Like him. Like him. Oh, yes. I see myself like him. Wow. Wow, a repair of the breach. Good. Yeah, this place is filled with the power of God. It's just filled with the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought not walk out of here with the, you, you ought to be able to walk out of here tonight without a pain or an ache. Glory to God, because the power of God is so rich and real in this place. Hallelujah. Give him a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I know this hasn't been a long sermon. I didn't intend for it to be long. But I intended for it to be encouraging. Hallelujah. You ought to walk out of here encouraged. Bring someone with you tomorrow. Bring someone with you tomorrow. I'm going to talk, unless the Lord changes my mind, I'm going to talk tomorrow night as what, uh, about what separates those who have it from those who want it. Those who have it from those who want it. How many know it's one thing to have it, another thing to want it? Glory to God. But I'm going to tell you, you can have what you want. Yes, yes, yes. You can have what you want. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, glory. Father, we thank you. Just, 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 a, just a little simple message, God. But one of encouragement. One God that would lift up our spirits. One God that would cause us to have a vision of who we are in you. Glory to God. God, I pray that when we look in the mirror, we see a we see a revelation of you in us. Glory to God. Not just a reflection of us, but a revelation of you in us. God, I, I, I pray that's done in the name of Jesus. I believe you for miracles tonight, God. Even as we speak, they're happening right now. God, in the name of Jesus, I feel the power of God in this place. <coughs> Just as you healed the little old woman that touched you, heal tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're in need of healing, Lord. We're in need of deliverance, God. We're in need of help. Help us, oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. And amen. Give the Lord one more hand of praise. Hallelujah. been good to be in the house of God, have you? Amen. You can stand with me if you want to. Does anybody need prayer before we leave? I don't want to leave here tonight. You've been in need. I don't know how anybody can need prayer now. But you need prayer? You still got diarrhea? No, I don't. Okay. 